He's a football man, he's a winner, but he's a terrible human being. Your dad said, my son Ryan is a rat and a womanizer. Usually I would smell a rat, but didn't. He's very good, pitiful human being. Your brother's Ryan Giggs, he's ultra successful, super famous, amazing footballer, can have any woman that he wants, and then he nicks your wife. It made me feel sorry for him. Really? Yeah. Weak-minded, petty, flat out stupid. Thinking you can get away with something like this. I could bury him if I wanted to. But you also went to jail, didn't you? Yeah. Well, not many people will know this, but they stuck me in with a crackhead. They spin me cell, and I'm a drug dealer, I'm a pimp. And did he ever properly apologise? No, he's just damage control. How did your mum feel about it all? Still not spoke to her for 13 years now. What was he accused of? Headbutting someone, fueled by alcohol, by the sound of it. Pretty embarrassing. Weak, like my ex-wife. Slap her, really. Okay. Many footballers she slept with when she was with me. Wasn't just Ryan. It was just about sex, mate. Shut up. Oh, actually, I seen him last year. So, what happened next? This is one of the craziest stories of betrayal you'll ever watch. This is the scandal that ruined the legacy of Britain's greatest footballer. But before we get into this, like, subscribe, and smash that notification bell. So Roger, you come from a family of athletes. Why didn't you pursue a career in uh, sport yourself? Well, I did. Well, well, I did and I didn't. I um, obviously I, I got expelled from school in the last six months of me um, school tenure. So I was twiddling my thumbs, and then it was obviously it got in the paper that I was expelled, and then through that I got a few offers to go on trial. I went to Torquay United. For a, for a week in the summer holidays, they asked me to stay over for a week to train with them, for with the apprentices, and then they offered me a two year contract apprenticeship. So I was there, and then I got in trouble when I was there for about nine, ten months, and then come home, and um, yeah, I didn't really play football then for about three or four years. But um, yeah, it was mostly when my, when my dad left about ten, eleven. I got into the wrong crowd, stopped playing football. But rugby was the, the, the sport I would have played. I would have watched, You'd have rather played rugby? I, I watched my dad play rugby from a kid. I always wanted to play rugby. I played rugby as captain for my school team, for my county team. Same with the football. So it was good. I always loved sports. But uh, yeah, just got into the wrong crowd and then just wasn't playing. But then obviously, like I said, I got, got into Turkey, Got Then I got my foot in the door. And then, uh, yeah, I messed it up, really. Probably one of, me, one of the few regrets that I've got in my life, to be honest. But you didn't, you didn't go down. You, what position did you play in? Do you think you were talented enough to make it as oh, a Oh, yeah, as a, as a yeah, under, well, not being big head or nothing, but at the same age, at the age of 11, 12, I was just as good as my brother, but you know, you can't not keep playing and not doing the same things than he was and, and practicing and, and trying to get better thinking you don't need to because you're better than everyone else. That right. Kind of mindset. You were that kid that just could dance around everyone yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But obviously when people get older, <clears throat> the gap becomes smaller and obviously people are training, getting better and you're just messing, messing about. about. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's interesting. You said you'd rather have played rugby. That would have been, because I, I feel I'm a rugby fan as well as a football fan, but I feel like if you had the choice, given the money that's in football and the, lack of damage, physical damage. I would, yeah, I would I did, advocate going down a football route. That's not something I thought. I just don't, you know, my dad was my kind of my hero. He watched him play rugby for growing up, played for Cardiff, played for Swinton, played for Wales. Yeah. Football wasn't really in the pitch. I could play football. But then obviously when, and when Ryan got with United round about, I was about 12. Cause he went, cause he was at Manchester City at first. And obviously they didn't offer him anything or, just don't know what went on there. And then United did, and he just jumped ship straight away because he was a huge United fan. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I just didn't really pursue it like I should have, but rugby was my passion, yeah. Um, but obviously, I loved sports, like cricket as well. Yeah, okay. So I could have played any sport. To yeah. Because I was that kid, sport Billy at school. What position did you play when you played rugby? Stand-off, scrum-off. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, you're not like six foot five or something, which a lot of the other positions <laughs> no, need, uh, no. need to be. I'm not the biggest either, yeah. so. but I was quick, I was yeah. good with the hands, sidestep, dummy, all that kind of business. Um, yeah, but some of the lads I was playing with, 
they went on to, to great things in rugby as well. Like Adrian Morley played for Leeds, Sydney Roosters, mm. Great Britain, uh, Nathan McAvoy, uh, Callum Nalapatalano. There was a there was a big group of my age that went on to play rugby league and play mm. internationally. Right. Okay. Um, why'd you get expelled? Oh, it was something really stupid. It was, I had this load of stipulations and in the end it was one that I didn't do my homework. So I got expelled for doing home. Didn't Not do doing homework. homework. Yeah. Was it, was it kind of one of those where it's the, it's like, the, this is the last, last straw. Yeah. The, yeah. You have to do this. You have to do that. And I didn't do it. Yeah. Boom. And then you said you got in trouble when you were on trial, when you were yeah, on trial? Well, no, I was, I was, it was a two year contract. Two year contract. A, apprenticeship. Yeah. So 27 pound 50 a week. <laughs> Don't spend pound, it all at once. Twenty-seven pound fifty a week. Uh, digs, great family, but I'd get in trouble. I remember the coach was coming in, so I was sharing with a another lad called Adrian Tucker, Welsh lad, and we were sharing a house. And I was out, and the coach has come in to check that we're in, and he's in, and I could see him in in the in the living room. Or he was in the in the kitchen saying, "Yeah, he's upstairs." And as we, I was coming around the back, I had to climb up the drain pipe, go through the window. Because <laughs> you've been out when you shouldn't have been. But yeah. But then they found out and they moved me to the chairman's daughter house, family. Right. So I was staying there. And then one weekend, you went to the chairman's house for dinner. And he used to have, he used to have these massive rolls of like cash. And I took some. But then I told a teammate and the teammate has got done for something and grasped me up and then and that was it, yeah. Uh, so you just you just took cash off the chairman? Yeah. Bloody hell. I know. Don't even don't even know why I did it. Yeah. It was impulsive, I didn't need it. Just seeing it went boom. So it was just a stupid thing. We were you like that, just couldn't resist doing I things. Would, that I wouldn't with think you. before I did things. Something yeah. to get in my head, I'd just do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, why well, have I just done that? So it was very impulsive. Yeah. But obviously now I'm as older. I think things through before. <laughs> Do yeah. I think everyone does that more as they get older. No, no, I had, had no. Yeah. Felt, yeah. Um, you mentioned your dad there. Do you have a complicated relationship with your dad? Like, how would you describe that? No, not really. But, um, <coughs> say complicated, it probably is now, but it, it, you know, he was my hero. And then suddenly at 10, 11 years of age, he's gone. Mm. I've probably didn't see him for like 25 years. That long. Wow. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it messed me up massively for years. But um, yeah, just, I only found out recently, like last year, that he was in prison. That's why he couldn't, like, where he went missing. That's why he left. He was in prison, yeah. So I don't know what he was in prison with. I didn't even get into that. But yeah, it was just, um, and then he moved back to Wales and got in a new relationship and got married. And yeah, it was just, uh, didn't see him for like 25 years and then obviously we're speaking now and got a good relationship now but yeah yeah did you hate him for it at the time no no just didn't understand just start just no i didn't hate him just angry mm. Mm. do you think that had an impact on you said you were getting in trouble doing the wrong things well, i was such a good football and such a good rugby. My mum, my dad have never ever seen me play football or rugby as a child. Really? Yeah. So I just felt that there was no support and one of the reasons no one's ah, so why should I? That's one of one things I'm upset with him myself. That I could have gone, you know what, I'll show you. But I didn't, I went the other way. Right, okay. You could have used it as motivation. Yeah. Do you think Ryan did? No, he just loved football. Right. Didn't get str had good friends. They all played football where mine were all robbing cars and not doing stuff <laughs> right, okay. all this and none of them were interested in football. And I just got in the wrong crowd where he had probably had a good set of friends who were playing football or if he was going football, they'd go and watch him or... Yeah. So speaking of Ryan, um, for you, United's best ever player? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Up there, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. To play for... 24, 25 years, people don't understand this. He didn't, he never finished in the league above third in his 25 years. We either come first, second or third. Mm, yeah. Which is... Uh, which Remarkable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really Especially you see what ha what's happened with United in the last 10 years, let's say. And you see the players now and, and you think the wingers now, 
You know, mm. they're probably the best one that I was listening to the radio when he's coming down and talk about Bukayo Saka is probably one of the best wingers. <laughs> Not having it? No. Well, you know, he's, he's a good winger, yeah, but to the levels of, like, Ryan, it's nowhere near right, in my yeah. eyes. Like, yeah. same with Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford's got everything to be a top footballer, but... Yeah, it's not showing at the minute. He's got the talent, but to me, it seems like there's something up here with him yeah. that's stopping yeah. him from yeah. being able to go where to the he level didn't, where he, yeah. nothing would affect. Yeah, Ryan would nothing would affect him even. It, you, you probably it would affect him. You wouldn't see it. Yeah, nothing affects his football. He loved Manchester United. Everything was drove driving to play for Manchester United. So when Ryan starts playing for United, he becomes one of the most important players in the team. It seems like you weren't, you didn't struggle with that from a jealousy standpoint, which I think a lot of people would. No, you were proud. No. You followed the team. I think you went to every game in the 1999 season, didn't you? There was nothing more that I enjoyed than going watching my brother play for his team that he loved. Nothing more. Yeah. Nothing more. I used to love it. And then obviously I started playing, so I couldn't go, but. Yeah. Because I was playing Saturdays, even like part time, but still getting paid. So, but there was, before that, when I was living in London as a state agent, that was. 98 or 97 to like 2000 I went to like mostly every game because I, yeah. I, I would drive home to Manchester every weekend I would go to European games and yeah I just went everywhere I think that's quite remarkable I think a lot of people would really struggle struggle with the sibling having that success mm. no just not that just not built that way no cause, no because in my mind in my mind if I really wanted that, I could have gone down that road. But would, I, you know, to play devil's advocate, I'd have thought that would make it harder, thinking that could have been me. No, no, no. Okay. No. Wow. Fair play. <laughs> no, it's just, no, no, it's just, uh, people say, are you no, not, not at all. He's put the hard work in, put the graft in. I didn't. Mm, okay. If I did, then it would have happened, but I didn't really fully commit. Yeah. Um, what's the greater achievement, the '99 treble winning team in United, or what City did last year? See, when you see when I seen this, I was, they're both remarkable. Mm. So they're both really good. Was United harder? I would say yes. Okay, why? Quarterfinals, Ronaldo, the original Ronaldo, they played against, yeah. and that Inter Milan team. That Juventus team, Edgar David, Zidane, list goes on and on. They had some great teams, the Bayern Munich team. Um, I just think there was better players and better teams around then. Not like now where the, the Premier League dominates, so really it's highly likely that the English teams are going to be there or thereabouts well, at the it, end of the well, tournament. It dominates because of the most so money's then. there. Yeah, but that wasn't, that was no case in 99. Well, well, Still Italy, Syria, wasn't Italy it? was yeah. there because they had the most money, so they dominated, so... <clears throat> Money dominates, really. Mm. Even unless you're Real Madrid. Yeah. So it sounds like you enjoyed having a famous professional footballer brother, that there were positives to it. Well, yeah. yeah it was, um, your, your brother played for Manchester United, one of the biggest clubs in the world. And you're seeing it first and the change of like 26 years that night when they won the league the first time <clears throat> against Blackburn. It was unbelievable, yeah. And 26 years, I find, find it difficult to believe that Manchester United didn't win the league for 26 years. Mm. Yeah. Well, Liverpool obviously did a similar thing recently, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, we could go that now. It's not been nearly on 10 yeah, years yeah. now. Yeah. Do you think it would have been different had he played for another team? Ooh, that's a good question. I couldn't see him play for another team, to be honest. Interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of those... Man United players from a similar time to Ryan that you'd probably say the same thing because not, not people not many people will know this but there was a period of time where there was a contract dispute and he was like mm, but I might have to leave might be, might be going he didn't want to but it was like to save face but it would have gone to Barcelona mm. and then he would have been that Barcelona team wow so wow yeah, that's quite something. Because mm, it was round about 2005, 2006. Yeah. That Barcelona team went on from yeah, 2007 yeah, yeah. to 2012. So, yeah. 
yeah, it's, it's crazy to think of a lot of the what ifs with that, yeah. the moving parts. If this had happened, what mm. would have gone on and, and all that sort of stuff. So I think the Spanish game would have suited him at that age. Of, he was, because he'd slowed down a bit. We could play football yeah. still. Pass yeah. the ball and everything. <clears throat> um, there must have been negatives to like having Ryan as a brother. There's always negatives. There's always negative, jealous people. People just talking crap because they're jealous. But Would that piss you off? If they're criticising him, for example. Probably early on, yeah. Yeah. But then, you know, I've been dealing with this now for, what, 30, over 30 years. Get used to it. Yeah, so, how long have I dealing with it? Since I was 14, so yeah, 32, 30 odd years, so, <clears throat> you get to deal with it um, easier as it goes on. So changing tack slightly, um, you mentioned that you had difficulties and made mistakes early on in your life. You also went to jail, didn't you? Yeah. Why? And and I saw beforehand, you may mention that you enjoyed it whilst you were there. I didn't enjoy it. What? Well, I didn't enjoy it, but... Okay. It was... Um, <laughs> I was in a nightclub or a bar in the Urino, some big... Dopey City fan comes up. Uh, <laughs> Who kicks his brother? Mate, I'm having a wee. <laughs> so I finish my business and go out of the club, go to the other side of the club. He comes over. Okay. Mate, do one. So we go to the other side of the club. He comes over again. So I said to him, mate, right, let's go. Down the stairs, out waiting for a taxi. He comes out of his mate again. He kicks off. They, them two get beat up. Me and my mate end up going to prison. That's how it ended. Right. That's how it started. That's how it ended. Do you think you would have still gone to prison for something like that if you didn't have your name and the, the fame that you have? Possibly, because I had, I had this police woman who had it out for me. Police surveillance, pulling me outside nightclub, strip searching me. Before this happened? Before this happened, uh, yeah. Okay. Why? You don't know. No. No. And you enjoyed being in prison? What, what is enjoy, that Enjoy. That's what I say, enjoy. I, I, <laughs> I make the best thing out of a bad situation, and that's what I did. Mm. It was it was strange rage. Don't get me wrong; it was twenty three hour lock up. So they stuck me in with a crackhead. They spin me cell. They they they, they strip search me. They put me in isolation. They try and send me into another place. So there's a lot of screws there messing about with me trying to. But I was just laughing through it all. They obviously thought they was gonna. But you know, I grew up in Salford. I grew up with, yeah. I did, it, was, it was nothing but then when I went to Kirkham it was just like an open prison just don't if you get in a fight you get 14 days if you kick a duck you get 28 days added onto your sentence because there's ducks all <laughs> milling around <laughs> so that's what they say to you if you get in a fight you get 14 days added on you said if kick you a kick, duck I was like you, you must you, mean you don't really mean a duck if you, you do mean a duck everywhere <laughs> If you kick a duck, you get 28 days added to your sentence. If you have a fight, it's 14 days. Like, what? <laughs> but it's like you're going from strangeries to a Cat A prison where you go in one door, it's locked, one in door, so you get into it. It's like the fence is that big. You go, there you go, go to your billet. It's like... So I'll get back to my conversation with Roger in a second. Before I do, just want to quickly let you know that if you're a business owner, marketer, entrepreneur, and you're running ads online, or you want to run ads online and get significantly better results than what you're currently getting, my company can help you with that. We create, manage, and optimize online ad campaigns for our clients on Meta, Google, etc. If you're interested in finding out more, there is a link in the video description below. Hopefully, we get a chance to work together. How long were you in for in total? Four and a half months. So okay. It wasn't a, a long period. Yeah. But like I say, I made the best thing out of the situation. Um, never forget where you were on September 11th, and that's where I was. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, did you get any into any fights, or did you kick any ducks? No, no, no <laughs> I definitely didn't kick any ducks. <laughs> no, you don't really. I didn't. No, you don't really get into any fights. There was there was a few people wanting to take pictures oh, really? in prison. Okay. So I had to. No, no, but then there was scouts, so they're trying to do it. So, right, if you're going to do it, I'm getting something out of it. Right. But anyway, the, the, the guy who they'd give the camera to made sure he got caught on the, as he was going out. He was getting right. released, so they wanted to give him the camera to give it to the whoever to get the pictures. So you could get photos. And and he made yeah. sure that they found it right. and then told them what had happened so that they had never got out. Right, okay, okay. 
Did you any? You say Which you is some, a good thing for me because they would have shipped me out and moved me. Oh, if you'd been photoed? Yeah. So there wasn't, you didn't feel like it was dangerous because of your name and people knowing who you are? I grew up with Salford with some, uh, what I'm going to say this, um, unsavory people. So mm. I knew people. So I know some people that are in there. And, and uh, yeah, so I, I kept to myself to self. I don't go around looking for fives. Just, yeah. Just kept my head down. Okay. My job was a bin man. Right, okay. So every building on the, on, in, the, in, the, in the prison, every day you had to go and change the bins. That was my job. Ten pound a week. <laughs> Ten pound a week. Ten pound a week. <laughs> wow. That was that was a an ex, that was a well paid job. My mate was picking broccoli in the field from nine o'clock till five o'clock, and he got seven pound fifty for that. <laughs> <laughs> so you feel like the bins was a good game. <laughs> I was in like an hour round, and then just sat in me in my little bin hut chilling, listening to the radio. Wow. Okay. Um. You moved away from Manchester at one point. You moved to London, didn't you? To yeah. To sell houses. Why did you do that? Did you want to get away from Manchester? No, we, we was out um, a night out in London and uh, with my mate. My mate was seeing a girl from London. She worked in a estate agent. And after a night out, we're just talking. She goes, oh, we'll look after someone to work in a estate agent. So I'm like, oh, I'd do that. Met a boss on the Sunday. He come pick me up, drove me around London like an interview. Dropped me off and said, right, you got the job. When can you start? Right. And it was probably one of the... Apart from the job that I've got now, the best job I've ever had. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Why did you stop? Mazzy and my mood, the fake shake. Right. He, um, he's, um, he's rang the office asking for me. I've, I've met him saying he's lucky. He's, he's out here looking for, for apartments for his, for his family members who are going to King's College. And we need some part, uh, apartments to rent for two years. So I'm showing him around these apartments. He says he wants two. He's going to pay the full two years up front. So this is a big commission for me. So I'm trying to keep him sweet. Yeah. So he's asking, can he go out round West End? As in at East End, he can't be seen in the West End because one of the family members is, is ill. Is there anywhere where we can go in the East End? So we had like a corporate membership of some lap dancing place near the office. Right. So I took him there. And every time I took him there, he kept on asking me for drugs. Mm. I said, I'm, I, don't, I don't do drugs. I'm not from London, so I don't know. So anyway, he kept on asking me for about two or three weeks. I kept on seeing to tell him the same answer. All in, in the while that this is still ha still waiting for this uh, commission, this, these flats to yeah. go through. Anyway, the one week I'm, so I'm going back to Manchester. He says, "Oh, is there any chance we, we're gonna we could come down and see see your brother and and go out with you?" Manchester went, "Yeah, no problem." So we got to the Marriott, met Ryan, had a picture. He's gone off. Then I've got a phone call. Can you get any drugs? Mm -hmm. I said, "Yeah, no problem." In Manchester, I'll ask, I'll ask whoever I need to ask. Someone's come, delivered it. He's made me go and pick it up, come in, and then in the hotel and saw camera and da da da. And I'm a drug dealer, I'm a pimp, and in the prison, in the paper the next, next week. And, were there and any I was fired straight away. Wow. Were there any legal consequences for that? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's part of the settlement of the hacker case, I suppose, because he's part of News International. Right, okay. So it's all did you, connected. Did, did you think at the time, like, like when you're doing that for him, you're thinking, this is not a good idea? No. No? No. No. Okay. That's... <laughs> that that's my mistake yeah because okay. I, he was good at, he, was, he was good at what he did yeah but usually I would smell a rat but didn't he was very good mm. okay um, you mentioned that your relationship with your father is uncomplicated shall we say at this point um, seems like that might not be the case between your dad and Ryan I've got a quote here and your dad said my son Ryan is a rat and a womanizer what do you think of that? He's just following him. <laughs> He's just following his dad's footsteps. <laughs> uh, yeah, he he's can't really talk. Right. Yeah, really okay. Talk. Pot calling kettle black. Yeah, something. yeah. Um, um, and there's obviously something between them two that I'm unaware of, I don't know. He's obviously got, I don't know. When we were kids, I would always be with him and Ryan would never be there and Ryan would always be my mum. I don't know. 
there's, there's something deeper there that, that I'm aware of. Okay. So on the way over here today, I was driving over and I was thinking about obviously this conversation and your situation. And I was thinking, I was sort of putting myself in your shoes and I was thinking, okay, so you've got Ryan Giggs as a brother, which I feel like that would be tough to cope with. You said it's been mostly good, you know, up to a certain point, of course, um, which fair enough. But so your brother's Ryan Giggs. He's ultra successful, super famous, amazing footballer, can have any woman that he wants and then he nicks your wife. That must have made you murderously angry when you found out about it. What was that like? I didn't, you know, it made me feel sorry for him. Really? Yeah. Because you're like, like what all of that you've just said. Yeah. Why would you want something that it's just, yeah, it's just uh, weak-minded, um, petty, yeah. and uh, just flat out stupid thinking you can get away with something like this for so long. Are you stupid? Not just stupid, but incredibly immoral. Well, that's him. Right, okay. He's immoral if it's his mate, it's his brother. If you want to sleep with a girl, he's going to sleep with a girl, whoever it is. Doesn't care. No, no. If it's his mate, he's known for all his life, doesn't care. As long as Ryan Giggs is satisfied, he'd be happy. Wow. Did you always think, did you worry about that beforehand? Do you think that might be a possibility? Yeah. Yeah. And did you have suspicions? Because it went off for yes. eight years, didn't yes. it? Yes. But mum said, no, no. You asked her about it? Yeah. How did you find out? A mum come to the door at uh, my house at six o'clock in the morning in the news of the world. There's a paper, there's a story. Wow. <laughs> what was that like? Shock. Uh, yeah, that was a shock. And in the- Because she disappeared and I'm thinking, where's she gone? On a Saturday night. But she's with Matt Slifford in Spain. Right. Took the kids, bosh, gone. And then her mum comes to the door. Her sister wouldn't come in, her sister was in. Because I was friendly with her sister. Her sister wouldn't come in, she was sat in the car. Her mum come in. Give me the news of the world. And that's you see, what I found out. That's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, you seem very level, but at the time, did you just want to smash everything it's just up? Just out of body. No, it's just a shock. It's, out, it's weird, so you can't explain it. It's like out of body experience. You're just like, you're functioning, but you're not functioning properly. You're just like, it's, like it's weird. Yeah. Were you angry? No, no. Wow. No. I think I'd have wanted to kill him. No. Pissed off, but wasn't angry. And, and him or her? Both. Yeah. Both. More her. More her. More her. More her because we were married. Um, yeah. Just got married a year before. Um, but, um, yeah. Um, but I knew he, he was capable of something like that, so you'd expect her to, if she didn't. And then, what contact did you have with him afterwards? Oh, full contact, because I'm at Worlds at this point, and they're, all the family are in Spain with him. Right. And they're asking me to come out there with them. Okay. I was like, nah. Yeah. Nah. Because that could have gone, that could have gone south. Because I could have just flipped. Yeah. So yeah, I, no, I just stayed away and stayed at Worlds for about a week, uh, maybe more. Just stayed out of the way, yeah. Because everywhere I went, there was cameras, there was just following me everywhere for about two or three year, weeks. You just couldn't go out into the world yeah, or do anything? no, no. So I just stayed in. I mean, that's quite good self-awareness at the time to think, I don't think I can be around them because I don't trust myself. Yeah, no, nah, yeah. And I think a lot of people could relate to that. Yeah, and it could have gone south. And like all of them, oh, you come out here. With nah, no chance. Are you surprised that, did it impact Ryan's public image as much as you were thinking it would? Are you surprised he's been able to get the jobs that he's got and thought of in, in the way he no, still is? No, because for me, it doesn't, it doesn't, see, this is where 
people say, well, what do you mean? Well, I don't think his personal life should affect his, his professional life. Okay. But that's just my view. You know, he's, he's an excellent footballer, sterling career. And not all that going on, it never... F so he's mentally strong. Yeah. But no. Um, it's obviously affected him now, but that's nothing to do with me. It's what happened in the last couple of years. Yeah, so. I wanted to ask about that. Do you know, do you have details on that? What's the, what's the truth behind? No, no, no details. Like I said, just... It's just unfortunate that he was silly enough to get himself in that position because, and then going to court and having everything laid out, it's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, okay. What was he accused of? Headbutting, headbutting someone, um, just, just silliness really, just silliness, but all fueled by alcohol by the sound of it. What? Do you ever think about how his story is likely to unfurl going forward? Is it is it going to have a bad ending? I don't think it's ended yet because, you know, it can't end like this, but he's got to take the leap because he wants, he wants to be a manager. So he's got to take the leap somewhere, but it's got to be the right place because now he's, he's, you know, he's, he's coming from behind. And in football, you get left behind pretty quickly. It moves on, it evolves. Yeah. yeah. So, but uh, you see these managers and coaches getting jobs I'm amazed that he hasn't gone for a job or uh, yeah because you know he's a football man he's a winner so but it's what comes with it yeah I was going to say surely mm. there are club owners thinking mm. that doesn't represent our brand very well even though you know he got thrown out of court mm. it's still that but even even the affair with yeah well, that's what I mean he's, 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 no he's a great football but no, he's a terrible human being that's what the conversation would be in it. But do we want to win or do we want a terrible human being? But he's not a terrible human being. He's just made some bad mistakes. But you, you think know, you see it that way? You don't think he's a he's a bad person for what he did to you? No, he's just a product of his own environment. At the early age, been given everything he wants, never been saying no. Okay. So maybe it's the people around him that have enabled him mm. that that are weak. But you know, he's still knows what he's doing so he's still very much to blame for it all right yeah because I suppose by that logic you could excuse people for all sorts of terrible things like if he'd done something that he shouldn't have done would his mates go what are you doing well I'd say what are you doing you dick would right. his mates say that he'd go fuck off to okay. them what, what, at what point did he start? Did, I assume he went through the. I don't know the story. Did he go through the Manchester United Academy? And what age did he get? No, into? like I say, he was at Manchester City for right two two years, a year or two. Because the coach he was with, he was with um, a grassroots level was a City scout, so he got him there. Yeah, and obviously it didn't work out there for whatever reason, and then he ended up going United. Oh, but what age? Fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, I, I always I, I sort of seem to think that. If you're in that position at that sort of age, it would be difficult to not end up with somewhat of a god complex. Do you think that's what happened with uh, with Ryan? Possibly, possibly. Hmm. Just yeah. thinks he can't do anything wrong and get yeah. away with whatever he wants. No, yeah, possibly. Yeah, and obviously, yes, you can do that, but when your your powers diminish, you come open target, and you're not playing football or you're not in a strong position like you've been in the past, then we've seen it before. We've seen it before over the years. People uh, take advantage of their, their position. It goes on and on. If it's TV, if it's Phillips Goldfield, or it's, 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 it, it goes yeah. on. So what year did you find out about the affair? What year did that come out? 2000. I got married in 2010, 2011. 2011. He stopped playing... 2013, just before that, so he was still playing at the time. Yeah, okay. I thought you know, this is when it was about the same this time. When we met afterwards. Oh, I'm gonna get stick on the. Oh, I'm gonna, gonna be oh, you know, this petty crap that he was telling me that you know I'm gonna get stick. Every so Ryan film. was saying he's gonna get stick yeah. to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd have been like, so. Yeah, I don't care. After like six weeks, after all this happened, he's eventually met me, 
and this is all it wasn't it was, well, no, it was nothing it was just about sex you know, you know look at all the stick I'm going to get now all the, all the pay pie you know what I mean it's like mate shut up yeah I mean I think everyone hears that and just thinks what an awful thing to do to a family member it's of yours selfish and, and you're self- going to get stick but absolutely rightly so so it took you six weeks after it that's came out that's Peter another Lee. reason why I felt sorry for him. Look at him. just a pitiful human being look at him right, okay. all that sh- crap he's done and now he's thinking oh I'm going to get a stick so it's six weeks after this comes out, you meet up and he's wanting effectively pity. He's he's positioning himself as the victim yeah. when you meet with him. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. Did that make you even more angry? Just felt sorry for him. Just felt sorry for him. Pitiful human being. <laughs> what sort of contact do you have with him now? Much of anything? Zero, no. Yeah. I've, never, I've never even seen him. I've actually seen him last year. I was going out with, um, with some girl and as we're walking into the bar... She said, oh, your, your kid's always in here. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> so I've gone in and he's in there. Anyway, I've gone to the bar, got on a drink. He's got straight out of there. <laughs> okay. It's probably a good idea. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, you must have known quite a few of the Man United players, having been obviously in and around the club with your brother and things like that. Did any of the big names reach out to you at the time and I'm so sorry no, to hear all, about they're this. All, no, they're all joking about it on Twitter. Really? Yeah, well, who, not who, joking who? on it, like Rain Rooney, Saving Private, I'm going to watch Saving Private Ryan tonight, you know, like stuff like that. What, what do you think, what do you mean by that? Saving Private Ryan? Yeah, the, yeah, the film. He's, so yeah, so he's, 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 right. he's, he's basically saying, I'm backing Ryan Giggs on this. Yeah, well, they all stick together, don't, I don't well, know, I he's just trying to make humour of it, isn't he? You know, yeah. can't all shag grannies and... <laughs> Do, do brass can we get away with it so we can't talk yeah I know but yeah yeah he's, he's a good example <laughs> yeah I feel like a, a Gary Neville for example would really be uncomfortable with that behaviour and he would not like that at all did you know him and were yeah. you surprised that no one like that reached out to you oh no absolutely not no because he's been spouting this crap for years that I've been selling stories on him blah 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 blah, blah. Gary has and all right this, no Ryan right okay and even Wes Brown and we're talking we're talking not even this century now we're talking 98, 99 where Wes Brown says that um, oh Ryan's told me you've been selling stories I was like what? it's just totally false uh, private private Secret stories is just total crap, and this is the kind of sh- shit that he's been spouting to people. So they just think, oh, he's, he's been doing that. So it's just totally wrong. It's just talking crap. If, if uh, the fact that they think that I would sell private stories, they are dumb. And I guess you could have. I could still could have, still can now. But you, you don't no, want to. No, like. The, I w- I've done a podcast a couple of weeks ago where I said where I was I was angry I was tired didn't really want to do it and I said something that I shouldn't have said I said oh, I could bury him if I wanted to I could I mean I would and I would never I could never bury him it was just something that I shouldn't have said and I asked the guy in the podcast to take it out and he said give it a week and see what you think and I never, I never went back to him and that was the headline the one that what I want it taken out but it is what it is like a foot full headline or mm. I can bury my I could never bury him would I, I just said something because I was angry so you think no matter what you could release I could yeah, I could, yeah you know. it wouldn't it wouldn't bury him it wouldn't make him someone who no one would hire again no you just know what they already know mm. okay but um, there's loads of people, like, the amount of people over the, like, the years that rugby players, singers, footballers, actors, I've been out with them all. Right. I mean, why would I sell stories on people? That, mm. It's just ridiculous. But he's, he's going back to, the, this is going back to like 25 years now about this one reporter who I was friendly with. But yeah, I haven't spoke to this guy for like 25 years, but they still spout the same crap. 25 years on. It's interesting you mentioned Wes Brown's name. I'm speaking to him in five days' time. Yeah. Sounds like there's some anger there. Anything you would like me to ask him? Because, or I, say? Like, because I like Wes and I've not, never really spoke to him ever since. You know, I, I like Wes and I like his brother and I like his, his family, but 
I was so I was so angry, so angry that 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 he was said that to someone like him as well. He didn't like Wes. Didn't even you know he was his teammate, but yeah, it was. Um, and yeah, I knew his wife before he um, he got married to her. Uh, when I lived in London, she come down and stayed at an uh, apartment of mine, Leanne. She was a lap dancer then. His wife was a lap dancer. Yeah. Before right, okay. Yeah, she was a she was a lap dancer. Um, Imagine well, that might be something he doesn't he wouldn't have wanted people to know. It's common knowledge. Mm. Okay. Mm. Common knowledge. Okay. Um, in preparing, I was disappointed with Wes to actually think that. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I've never really spoke to him since. I don't so want no, to either. No, no, nothing you'd like me to uh, question him on. Why did you do that? Mm. Yeah, did you really believe that? Right, okay. Fucking idiot. Okay. Interesting, okay. I'll ask him. <laughs> <laughs> Let you know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, in, in preparing for this conversation... And now we know who the the real rat is right. when it all comes out. Yeah. You know, the amount of stories that I could have sold over the last 25 years, which you haven't, and now you're not you're not tempted for the money no 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 not at all say so like like with Ricky he's got Ricky and Lex we have been out with Ricky loads of times mm. Ricky's a great lad the amount of time people that I've been out with why the hell would I sell a story I'm like I, t I, t I totally get that with other people but I think most people would think yeah but your brother did something awful to you yeah and I did have spoke about that afterwards he was when I said to him, I'd met him for like six, after six weeks, he said, oh, I'm going to, we're going to get back to like we used to be, blah, blah, blah. I'm you two being friends. Right, and... okay, I'm fine. I'll let you, nothing. Not one phone call for six months. So, okay. Went to the sun. Then I did a story about what happened, blah, blah, yeah. blah. So that's what me selling the story. Yeah. I mean, you did that. I, 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 yeah. I'm thinking... In, in your shoes, had, had someone, had a brother of mine done that to me, I would I would want to tell everything and, and make as time, much money from it as possible. quarter of a mil for it. Really? A lot more. Instead, I end up getting not even a, a, a quarter of that. Okay. Because I waited. Waited the six months. Yeah. Obviously, you have... Uh, been able to uh, you know make some other money out of out of the whole thing we were talking before we started about the paddy power ad which is just awesome i was really watching that in preparation for this conversation it's hilarious um how did that come about um paddy power just obviously brainwave someone someone in, in their circles come up with it sent me the script the script was a little bit different they wanted me to slag off Wales a little bit, blah, blah, blah. And I said, that's not happening. So they tweaked yeah. it. And that was it, yeah. And you were you were otherwise pretty much on board. Yeah, you I, weren't reluctant. I met with a big shout to Martin Gibbons, because uh, I very rarely, I, I always forget to mention, but he was uh, the acting coach that I had. So I went through the scenes and, and done the acting a few times. So I was proper prepared, then met the director, the producer went through it a few times so I was really really prepared for it. that's why it was so good probably did you think it would get the sort of response that it did no not really no yeah no it was it was like over the first weekend it was like four or five million people watching it on YouTube I was like oh. <laughs> did you have people stopping you in the street all the time being like love the ad and stuff like but that when it come out the, as it was coming out I was flying to Dublin okay so as I got to Dublin it had just come out. Yeah. So in Dublin, Ireland, people <laughs> stopped him in the airport. It was crazy, yeah. And that must still be one of the things that people bring up the most when, yeah. they, when they speak to you. Yeah. It, it is absolutely fantastic. And then obviously he tried to ban it. Oh, oh yeah, okay. I was yeah. going to ask about Ryan's response. He tried well, to get it banned, did he? Well, someone did. Okay, so you assume it's... Someone with a high lawyer in, in London tried to get it. That's it. <laughs> it's promoting gambling. You know, he's got a Maserati, he's got champagne. Oh, they tried it on, yeah, on those yeah, grounds. Yeah. It's okay. We'll shorten it. We'll take that stuff out. Paddy Power, buzz him with it. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah, more, it, pub, more publicity, nice one. As I said to you, I've got a marketing background. It is absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought, oh, shit, they're going to be unhappy. Jane rang me. Oh, no, they're, they're so happy. <laughs> um, what did you get paid for that? 
Uh, well, as I'm doing it, Jane rang me and said, they do, they're doing so well, they want to keep you in a retainer. Mm, okay. So that retainer only stopped August last year. Right, okay. So they kept it for five years. Five years. Right. On a retainer, yeah. Okay. I mean, to some extent, are you happy at this point that Ryan had the affair with your wife? Because I, I and, and here's the argument that I would make around that, is if, if my wife was going to cheat on me, that relationship's going to be done anyway. At that point, I'd almost rather it was, at the time it's going to be hard that it's your brother, but I'd rather it was a big story that at least I can commercialise. I know you've not wanted to go down that line too much, but you've been able to do to some extent and get some benefit from it. Is that crazy or is there some logic to what I just said? No, no, yeah, 100%, yeah. 100%, but, you know, you have to be a strong person and not we binded because, you know, if you let your mind go crazy, it can, it can really affect you. Don't I don't really drink, so that would have been a problem if I, if I drunk because that's why I've stopped drinking because I would drink and my tolerance for crap would was zero. Yeah. So if anyone would say something I didn't like, then where well, if I'm sober, I just ignore it. Okay. When did you stop drinking? Well, I still like that like last night I had a pint a of beer. Yeah, yeah. I'm not binge drink. Okay. No. Yeah. I have a few, a lot of drinks. So I just lose discipline. It's interesting how many people I've spoken to either don't drink or drink a little bit. But It's just everything from early in my life, everything stemmed from alcohol. Mm. If I didn't drink, then that would have happened. And, you know, 20 odd years later, nothing's happened. Was that part of the problem that your, your dad had? Possibly. Possibly. But he's always been a drinker. The rugby guys like a drink. And yeah. Yeah, the other day he was gone out at one o'clock and he's coming in at two in the morning. He's been out all been day drinking and the ambulance turns up because he had a bad turn. He's, he can't be doing it. He's 30, 68, 69 years of age. Yeah. 12 hour binges. You can't do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, is Ryan a big drinker? Yeah, he likes his drink, yeah. Didn't, did he use that as an excuse? No. Okay. No. Did he ever properly apologise? Not really. Not really. It's just fake apologies. Okay. But not really. No, it was just damage control. Mm. Try and control the situation. Me. That won't happen. How did your mum feel about it all? Blue eyed boy. She was with him all the time, wasn't she? I've still not spoke to her for 13 years now. Really? No. Wow, okay. That seems bizarre that she would side with him over something that seems pretty black and white. I'm such a bad person. <laughs> okay. She said that to you? No, no, but no. That's what you think she yeah, might be thinking? I'm such a bad person. He's a blue eyed boy. Okay. Okay. Do you find it hard to trust people now? No, no, you can't, uh, no, this is where some people find it difficult, um, well, you don't have no trust problems, no, not at all. No lingering? No, none whatsoever. Interesting. Because if I'm going to let that affect the rest of my life, then it's just it's pointless. So you can't treat someone who you've met, like the girlfriend I'm, I'm with at the minute, I've been with her nearly a year. Can't think she's the same person. They're totally different people. But you keep away from Ryan, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you see him anymore anyway. But. No, you, you, would, you, you would think that you chose the wisely this time and a, yes. bit, more, yeah. a bit more strong-willed. A, a learning experience. And not weak like my ex-wife. That's, that's how you see her? Weak, yeah. yeah. Weak. Just a slapper, really. Okay. Many footballers she slept with when she was with me. Was it just Ryan? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Many. You started podcasting. Yeah. Why? 
just a friend of mine, um, about 2015, football one, just talking football. Yeah, just enjoy it. Something that you and now to I've do. just got my own on, on a Thursday, Roger Giggs on football, Ace Podcast Nation. Just an hour talking football. Mm. Every week, Super Six, that- fantasy football. And how's that gone? You say you enjoy it. Has it, yeah, has it done you what get, you wanted you it get to a do? A few, few fouls and it's just, a, you know, like yourself, it's just a process. Yeah. Start. I'm not the one that they're going to go like screaming and talking crap just to get views. Mm. I'm not that type of guy. Or tell stories. Or tell stories. So I'm just going to be straight, honest. Probably upset a few people, but just straight back. Yeah. Do you like having conversations like this about, you know, going into the stuff with Ryan or is it a, a necessary evil, let's say? I don't mind it. It's part of my life. And you know, and uh, the first one I did, I was like, the, the James English one was the first one I did and I thought, I'm not going to do anymore. But the amount of people yeah. that messaged me on social media saying, oh, you're such a, you know, you've helped me or blah, blah, blah. So that's why I've carried on doing it, to be honest. And I still get them today. Are these people that potentially been through a similar thing? Possibly. Or got family issues or, you know, my sister or my brother did this to me and they did it. Yeah. It's good how you, it, you know, it's made me see it from a different light, blah, blah, blah. I'm not talking like one or two, I'm talking hundreds and thousands. Wow. Hundreds, and, not hundreds of thousands, thousands. Hundreds and yeah. thousands, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you do seem very calm, very level, very accepting <clears throat> of what is obviously a difficult situation. It is what it is. Things are going to happen in your life. You can't, like I say to my, to my kids all the time, you're going to make mistakes in life. Just make sure you don't make a mistake that ruins or controls your life. Yeah. For the rest of your life. Yeah. And you don't think Ryan quite did that? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fab, well, thank you very much for um, coming to speak to me. Really appreciate you taking the time. Anyway, you want to send people, check out the podcast, of course. Yeah, just every Thursday night, 8 o'clock, Case Podcast Nation. But uh, no, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Short and sweet. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Cheers, bud. Cheers. That was crazy. I'm so surprised how relaxed Roger is about it all. What did you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, I think you're going to love my conversation with Paul Merson. He opens up about his insane addictions, his football legacy, and so much more. If you want to check it out, you can do so right here. But before you get out of here, like, subscribe, and hit the bell.